All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Shangsheng Orbital mod, which is being made by forum user Damon VV. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary for you to build your very own New Line One rocket, which is a real-world creation of the Link Space Company over in China. And this rocket, of course, has been in the news quite a bit recently, and I'm very pleased to see a kerbalized version of it here in the game. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at all the lovely parts we do get. Now let's grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake here, and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on the Shangsheng Orbital, which I really hope I'm saying that right. I looked up the pronunciation of those parts of the word online, so maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Who knows? And we'll start down here in the fuel tanks category, where we have two uh, lovely fuel tanks. The first being the XGX-1800 fuel tank, which is a pretty standard looking fuel tank, but does have some fun options in terms of the different logos we can display here, as we have really six different options to go with, and it's split between two different logo sections. So up here at the top, we either have this JS-1, what appears to be a kerbalized Chinese flag. If it is actually meant to be something in the real world, I'd love to know, but I, I don't recognize it. And then, of course, we can go with your own custom logo or nothing at all. And at the bottom, we either have the uh, Shangsheng Orbital or nothing at all there too for you to choose which is pretty cool so go with whatever you do prefer aesthetically and as for the stats on this tank it's a fairly small fuel tank holding 153 liquid fuel and 187 oxidizer we then have the xgx 340 fuel tank which is just a tad bit bigger, holding 810 liquid fuel and 990 oxidizer. Not quite as many options though on this one logo-wise as you either have the Jianxi or nothing at all there. Uh, but still, nice to have those options nonetheless for whatever your aesthetics are. Now let's pop these off and then head down to the engines category where we have two lovely new engines. The first being the XG x 5 sl engine, which is uh, the main engine for the rocket. This is what will hopefully be getting you up into space, has uh, five uh, thrusters down there at the bottom, and it will produce a decent amount of thrust and a uh, maximum of uh, 60. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but this is kind of a small rocket, so, you know, that's still pretty good, but of course, you have an alternate mode where you can get up to 188 kilonewtons of thrust if you're willing to use a heck of a lot more fuel. Other than that though, we do have an alternator built in, always nice to see, 1.2 degrees of gimbling range, so not a whole lot, but it will help with your control, and uh, yeah, all in all, just a good little multi-purpose engine here. And then after that, we have the XGX-60 a vacuum engine, which is meant for the top stage and actually to go with uh, this smaller tank here. And it is, of course, a much smaller engine, though still does have, you know, basically five little thrusters there. Very cool looking. I do love the detailing with this, with all the different little bits and bobs, both structural and piping, etc. And, uh, yeah, a lot less powerful with producing 41 kilonewtons of a max thrust in a vacuum using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Of course, also having an alternator and a bit of gimbling. Always good to see. Now, after that, we have nothing in commanding control, nor structural, nor robotics, but in coupling, we do have this XGX-1 guidance interstage. And this this is meant to go at the very sort of, uh, actually if I'm remembering the order, this 
goes under this tank here. And uh, that is where, of course, your final stage engine would rest nicely inside there in its own little custom shroud. So a good look on the interior. And this does serve as the, well, guidance unit, unit for your rocket. It is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, a built-in decoupler. Of course, why it's in the coupling category here. As well as, of course, some built-in RCS, a reaction wheel, SAS, and electric charge of a 100. So all in all, a, a good little thing here. And the RCS, I should point out, isn't our typical ones using monopropellant. It is using liquid fuel and oxidizer. So it will be using some of your rocket fuel. Now next in payload, we have the S-06 fairing adapter, which is of course where you're gonna be popping on your satellites. And as you can see, also does have two attachment points on either side for the fairing we'll look at here in a moment. But the important part on this is it too is an unmanned command pod with a data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, and 80 electric charge. So always good to have. And then of course we have the fairings with their decoupler power that you can pop on to either side to uh, fill in your rocket and keep it safe and of course having either the flag logo or nothing and then after that we have a nothing in aerodynamics in ground though we do have the XGX-1 prototype landing leg which of course is the landing leg for this rocket as it is meant to return under its own power much like the SpaceX rockets which is always fun and of course does retract nicely and and there we go. After that, we have nothing in thermal, nothing in electrical, nothing in communication, science, cargo, nor utility, which may make you wonder, well, where are the grid fins? The New Line 1, much like with the SpaceX rockets, uses grid fins to come back down and control itself on its descent. And the mod maker actually didn't make any grid fins, instead relying on you having another mod installed. Let me actually uh, scroll down on my other monitor here. Uh, the mod you should have installed to get the grid fins is the Kerbal Reusability Expansion, which I believe we have looked at here on the channel in the past. And it, of course, does include a couple of different grid fins for you you to use. So that is why it is not included in this mod. It is uh, a part of the required mod list. In fact, the only mod on the required mod list on the mod page for you to have here to get those. So let's actually look at uh, this thing in uh, practice where I have this ship I built earlier and let's head out to the uh, launch pad. Now the uh, mod did come with a uh, pre-made ship design Design, but when I tried to load it up, it apparently needed uh, some other parts that I did not have. So, uh, yeah, I just threw this together, which I probably should have added a uh, stability enhancer to hold this on. I mean, these lander legs are good, but as you can see on the launch pad, we're getting a bit of sway. Those landing legs are, of course, more designed for once this thing's out of a lot of fuel, because, you know, it's returning under its own power. So, uh, yeah, holding on to a full load of a ship, these things are definitely, definitely not meant for. But you know what? They still hold pretty darn well, which I am pleased by. So all in all, we got some good looking parts here for building a pretty small, but very functional rocket that can quite easily get into orbit. And if you are using the Kerbal Reusability Expansion, you can always bring down the main rocket bit here for reuse which is good times so let's see this thing take off turn on the SAS a throttle up and away we go and we'll pull in those lander legs there a good smooth animation and a good well controlled flight it is actually quite a uh, smooth ride in this rocket I've done a couple of launches with it into orbit and every time it's been very easy to control with no issues which is always good for any rocket uh, especially considering my usual ineptitude but uh, yeah we're of course not gonna go all the way to orbit with this thing so let us uh, throttle back and then release that stage dropping the rest throttling up and turning on our small engine 
which ain't gonna do much for us because of course this thing is meant for being used in the vacuum of space not here you know just a few thousand feet above uh, our launch site but still fun to use and then of course we can blow the fairings there they go revealing my hastily made satellite but uh, yeah that is it here for the Shangsheng Orbital Mod a good little collection of parts for an awesome new rocket that I've definitely had my eye on recently because it's always cool seeing new advancements in space technology so if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself which I would certainly recommend you go and do you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual but uh, that my friends is gonna be it for today I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when we'll be looking at hopefully another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always, have a good one!